Hey everybody, one that always bored, never boring. Today, I'm continuing my Hero Quest restoration project. I have not had a lot of time to get round to painting the actual miniatures. I have the heroes to get to next, which is what I promised I would get to next. But I did have time to do the weapon rack very quickly. And you can see here that mine was in a pretty bad state. Obviously, the shield was broken off on the left hand side there. This appears to be quite a common fault. I have seen at least three weapon racks where the shield is broken off on this side. But I am also missing the handle of the sword here, so I need to actually make a replacement handle there. But then it's just the usual stuff. There are nubs to clean off. There is some old paint to strip off and then obviously a new coat of paint to apply. The first thing is to reattach this shield. Fortunately, I still have the piece and it's a pretty clean diagonal cut. So I can just glue this back on. And I'm using plastic glue for this because it will melt the plastic together and form a really strong bond. After a few seconds of holding that in place, it will stick. And when it's completely dry, the two parts will meld together and that'll be good as new. The sword handle is a bit more of a problem. I'm not very good at making things with green stuff, so I found a really odd workaround. I have here some 2mm magnets which I used for my Space Crusade magnetizing project, and these are really, really cheap, and they happen to be the same diameter as the handle of the sword. I also have this bag of M2 nuts which I use for agitating paint or weighting miniatures. And I simply super glued three magnets and a nut together. I didn't get any footage of me doing that because it was a very fiddly process because obviously we are dealing with very small parts. But with just a little bit of super glue and a little bit of patience, I managed to fashion a new handle for this sword. And I'm using some high impact Gorilla Glue to attach it to get a decent bond. And then a few seconds holding that in place. And there we go, new handle for the sword without having to faff around with green stuff, which I'm no good at doing. Next, I just need to take the nubs and things off, clean up the mold lines. So I'm using my side clippers on the big nubs. And then where there are mold lines and little rough edges, I'm going to use a mold line remover, occasionally a craft knife, just to clean those up ready for painting. And with that done, I will spray coat the miniature with Chaos Black. And then I'm going to give it two coats of Morn Fang Brown. I use Morn Fang Brown quite a lot for furniture. I think it's a nice, rich color and a good basis for old looking furniture. And as you can see, I'm covering everything, even the shields, the weapons, even elements that will get other colors applied afterwards. By using brown over the whole thing, it just means that even if I do miss a little bit later on, it's not going to show up so much. With the Morn Fang brown dry, I'm going to use Zandri dust to paint any leather straps on handles. Just carefully adding that in. And as with all my furniture, I'm doing a quick paint job here to get it done and on the table as soon as possible. Next, I'm using lead belcher. And of course, this is going to be for the blades of the swords, the spear tips, the axe head, the mace, the flail, all those obviously metal things. And then it's time to open the liquid talent. I'm going to give this whole thing a coat of Agrax Earthshade. That's going to make the blades look a little bit older. It's going to enrich the wood color. It's going to bring out the definition on the detailing of the weapons and just make things look a little bit better in general. Next, I need to paint the shields and I'm using Pallid Witch Flesh as a base coat here. I don't like painting embossed shields. I find it very, very difficult. I think there's nowhere to hide your lack of talent with an embossed shield. They're difficult to do really, really well. But I thought I'd try something a little bit new with these shields and I actually ended up not really liking the end result. I may repaint them at some point in the future, but for the purposes of this video, I stuck with it. So with two coats of pallid witch flesh applied, I'm going to apply blue tone to one shield and green tone to another. And I'm coating the whole thing and that's going to run into all of the details and provide a nice dark shade that will make the embossed detailing pop out. Blue for one, green for the other and then these need to be left to dry completely. Afterwards, I'm switching to Calgar Blue and I'm going to paint the raised detailing on the blue shield, obviously avoiding the recesses, just being as careful as I can. And obviously these paints have all been thinned a little bit. And then I'm using Thousand Suns Blue to paint the rest of the shield. 
And again, I want to make sure I'm leaving the shading around the raised detailing. Next, I'm going to use Goblin Green, and I'm going to do a similar process on the green shield. So the Goblin Green will go over the emblem, making sure that I do not go into the recesses. And then I will use Green Skin on the rest of the shield. I'm then going to use Temple Guard Blue to do a dry brush of the blue shield, just hitting the raised details and the edges. And of course, I will do a dry brush on the green shield. I'm going to use Ogryn Camo for that. And with that done, this weapon rack is finished, apart from giving it a spray coat of varnish. So you can see there, that's what we had originally with the broken elements, the broken sword, the broken shield, the rough edges, and the original paintwork. And this is my finished piece. I'm pretty happy with how the handle of the sword turned out, considering it was the laziest method I could think of to get it done. I'm less happy with the shield. I wanted some colour on the weapon rack, but I'm not quite sure what I had in my head translated onto the miniature. I may revisit that another time. But for now, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.